My name is Val Malloy and I am a senior practitioner, that's a senior social worker with Corum, which is a children's charity based in London. Well, Thomas was born in Lyme Regis. Um, he was one of three sons born to a man whom we think was working in the customs house in Lyme Regis at the time. He wasn't a local man, but he and his wife had moved there. They had three sons, but Thomas was the only one to survive. But he went to sea as a cabin boy, and then when he was old enough, his father apprenticed him as a shipwright. Thomas trained as a shipwright both in London and eventually in Liverpool. He worked in Liverpool for a while and also in London, and then he decided to go to Boston. And he eventually retired from business and came back to England in about 1720, so he was in his 50s, 60s by that stage. There's some evidence that he'd been aware as a younger man of the fate of um, some children in London at the time, but he hadn't really, he didn't really start to think about it in detail until he retired from business and came back to London. At the time, I think attitudes towards illegitimacy were quite um, harsh, and so there was a great fear that if you set up um, a place that could take care of such children, then it would encourage promiscuity. So there was a lot of resistance to the idea of, of helping children like this, and uh, he eventually he won the hearts and minds of some of the ladies of society. Duch the Duchess of Somerset was the first woman who, whom, whose support he obtained. And through her contacts and through other female members of the aristocracy, he eventually was able to petition the Queen, Queen Caroline, and then King George II. The Founding Museum in London is in Bloomsbury, and it tells the story of the hospital he helped to set up. Um, so, yes, it's well worth a visit, um, and there's a lovely statue of Thomas Coram seated outside the museum. He must have been extremely dogged, um, had a very good heart, I would say. I mean, he wasn't easily put off, and although not well-educated, he clearly had a very warm and persuasive manner. Um, and, yes, one can only admire him. We have a, an annual um, Charter Day lunch every year where we still drink his health.